Well, hello there. Welcome to my booth. I'm Jay, and today I was noodling around in my booth with a couple of my favorite microphones, the Shure KSM32 and the Neumann TLM103. And I was struck by how similar these two microphones sounded to each other. So I thought we would pop them on and do a quick comparison and see what y'all think. Before we dive in, if you like this stuff and you find it helpful, if you're willing to take a couple of seconds and click the buttons down there, it just helps other folks find us. Let's go. Okay, here we are on microphone A. Uh, if you don't have headphones on yet, I would recommend throwing those on to give this a listen. You'll probably get the most out of it. And there's no processing applied. I'm about four to six inches off of the microphone here in my booth. And how do you feel about this one? Let's hop over to the next. And here we are on microphone B. The levels are roughly matched between the two microphones. Uh, and there's, again, no processing going on right now. This is just the microphone as it is. Again, if you don't have headphones on, I would recommend it. Let's hop back over to uh, microphone A. And we're back on microphone A. This is, again, microphone A. Pay attention to the high notes, the low notes, discerning the differences therein and what you think about it. Let's hop back over to B. And we're back on microphone B. This is, again, microphone B. Um, again, same deal. Pay attention to the low notes. How do the high notes sound uh, and the differences therein? Let's go back over to microphone A. And one last time, back on microphone A, you know I love to read it. Here's that uh, Winnie the Pooh section. One day when Christopher Robin and Winnie the Pooh and Piglet were all talking together, Christopher Robin finished the mouthful he was eating and said carelessly, I saw a heffalump today, Piglet. And one last time, back on microphone B, one day when Christopher Robin and Winnie the Pooh and Piglet were all talking together, Christopher Robin finished the mouthful he was eating and said carelessly, I saw a heffalump today, Piglet. Microphone A was the Shure KSM32. Microphone B, as you might have guessed, was the TLM103. So in listening to these two mics head to head, the sonic differences between them in terms of their tone is pretty subtle, dare I say even minimal, at least to my ear. What it breaks down to for me is the 103 has a bit more of a V-shaped frequency response. It sounds like there's a bit more presence in the low end and a bit more air in the top end, whereas the KSM32 is a bit flatter sounding across the board. Does that mean that this is better than this or vice versa? No, I think at that point it comes down to a matter of taste and, probably more importantly, budget. Now, it's important to consider in that regard that most folks listening to whatever you're putting out are going to be listening on quality of speakers and environments that are far less ideal than a good pair of headphones are. And they probably aren't going to be able to tell the difference between the two unless they're listening really, really closely. That's my hot take on that front. Now, in terms of a voiceover artist and practical considerations in terms of using these microphones day in and day out for your work, there are a couple of other, of other differences in terms of each microphone's strengths and uh, not so strengths that uh, I think are important to consider. Starting off with the 103, it's an incredibly sensitive microphone. It will hear every little nuance in your performance, every little detail, and it does a lot of the work for you. Part of the beauty of that presence boost is when you start to get tired, there you start not being able to talk and articulate as well. This does a lot of the work for you in that it hears everything that you're putting down. It's a bit of a double-edged sword, however, in that if you don't have a ideally treated space acoustically, if your room doesn't sound great, and if you're not in a very well isolated booth, then this will also hear a lot of the problems with your space. Conversely, the KSM32, it is a medium diaphragm condenser microphone, whereas this is a large diaphragm. So it does, at least in my experience, it's a little bit more forgiving in terms of your room, in terms of your space. Like for example, if I'm shifting around a little bit in my seat, this is a little bit more, you know, easy on me than this one is. Now as a professional, I will always pretty much opt for uh, detail over ease of use in most cases. 
So that is something to consider, and depending on the stage you're at, that can be an important factor. Another thing to consider is because of the frequency boost here, the presence and clarity that this has in the top end, for some folks, this microphone may get a bit sibilant for you. This, I can't see that being an issue for a vast majority of people. I think you'd have to try pretty hard to make this a sibilant microphone, so that's something to consider as well. The 103 and Neumann in general are a really, really ubiquitous brand, and this microphone in particular, the TLM 103, is used all over the place. And what that means for your home studio as a voiceover artist is engineers, when you're working with them, certain clients, They'll be working with a lot of people who will be using this exact same microphone, and that may just be a little less friction for them at times. They usually opt for me when I give them the options of all the microphones I have. Nine times out of ten, they'll ask me to throw this on. And so just because of its ubiquity and ease of use, this is a nice thing to have as an option at times. It's never going to make or break, though, if you've only got the KSM32, Given how similar they sound, I'm sure a vast majority of engineers would be thrilled to have you use the KSM32. There's videos on YouTube as well, just people raving about this microphone. Incidentally, uh, when I was considering picking this one up, uh, I was combing some forum somewhere, and the voice of Goofy uses this microphone, or at least did at some point, over even the U87 AI, the engineers put them up, shot out a bunch of microphones, and they ended up using this. Whether or not that's true, who knows, but it's a nice little story and it sings the praises of the Shure KSM32 to a really high degree. Disney's Goofy uses it. And the very last thing that I'll touch on is both of these microphones are very readily available used. You can pick these up secondhand at almost all times. I got this one for about 200 bucks and Shure is really, really great about maintenance. I had an issue when it was shipped to me used and the company itself fixed it up for me, good as new. And this also came with a hard carrying case, a shock mount, a hard mount. It's totally decked out. Conversely, I got this used for about 800 bucks, again, in a hard case with a shock mount and a hard mount. So keep your eyes peeled used, just make sure you're buying one of these from a uh, reputable source so you're not getting raked over the coals there. I hope this was helpful for you. Let me know what you think, if you have a preference one over the other, and if you have any other thoughts about the two. Until the next one of these, be well, and I will see you there. Toodles. Toodles.